Hello again, business entrepreneurship students. This is Mr. Heal with a video lecture on Chapter 18. We'll do this in two parts. The first will be Chapter 18.1. And so in Chapter 18, we're going to talk about HR, human resources. Probably one of the more critical parts of a business, but usually doesn't get a lot of limelight. And that is, how do we attract and retain people? Uh, more than just labor. People, uh, people can really make or break a company. In fact, People, you know, companies don't make products and design services. People do. So it's critical. And then, of course, we'll uh, end up talking about the motivating factors, what you can do as a business entrepreneur to help motivate your employees. So let's start with uh, the objectives for 18.1. And really, it's pretty simple. We're just going to go over human resource management and identify the components. Um, and, and I can tell you that the really, I, I think it's the single most important resource in a company. So you can invest in robots and automation and those things, but um, the, the people are going to be the ones that interface with each other. The people are going to be the ones that design. People will be the ones that certainly uh, deal with customers. And uh, and so and then you'll relate to each other and relate to customers. It's, it's just that important. So uh, employees need to be recruited, hired, trained, and and really do have a, a major impact uh, on, the, on your company's performance. So, um, so a decent bit of uh, content, vocabulary, you should know these things, human resource, human resource management, that kind of stuff, really important. So um, human resource management is really one of the key topics for uh, 18.1. It really is, um, you know, first off, human resources. This is about the people employed in the business, okay? And a lot of, you know, the human resources, people call them personnel. So it's uh, HR human resources and or personnel director, you'll see that too, um, but they uh, they represent one of the largest investments you'll have, so it's important, you know. And so and so in terms of HR management, right? Uh, this is the part of the business concerned with the recruiting and managing employees day to day, and it really runs the gamut. So the primary goals of HR management are really twofold. Really, they're going to facilitate performance and improve productivity. So if you're in HR or you have to hire someone because you don't have anybody in HR, remember this: that you want to make sure your business is performing well. And then you're constantly looking to get better or improve productivity, where the person that you hire can do something this year, but without additional resources next year, or human resources next year, that person can do more. So they're increasing their productivity. Really key, two key goals for the uh, HR management, facilitate so performance and improve productivity. Okay, so given all that, um, here's sort of the components of HR management. Okay, and I'll go through these one by one uh, and, and just emphasize some things. Um, so you can you can read this straight out of the book, so it's uh, it's not too challenging. But let's just start with uh, recruiting and screening employees. Okay, so um, if uh, if you really go out and need and and have to go out and find new employees, one of the things you have to consider first and foremost is who do you got? Maybe it's really important that you promote someone that already works for you. Okay, and I'll tell you when uh, in my career. I started out with a large organization and I had an opportunity to have multiple different jobs because I continually got promoted from within. It's uh, it's one of the keys, I think, is that if people in the organization see people within the organization being promoted, it certainly is a motivating factor for them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in 18.2. Uh, but in previous mods, you heard about you know other recruiting opportunities like job boards and employment agencies and word of mouth is key. I think word of mouth is great. Relationships, networks. Uh, and then you can also uh, raid some competitors, which uh, the book talks about the upside and downside of that. But at the end of the day, if you have a great organization, you're really not raiding someone from a competitor. They're, they really want to go and uh, and work for you. Um, and so there are other things like uh, dealing with unions. And I don't know if you'll do unions are on the decline in the United States, but it's just an organization that represents a group of workers, and you probably have learned what labor unions are before. Uh, but it's really the focus of them is trying to bargain as one. And so if you have to deal with unions, you have wages, benefits, working conditions, and other concerns that they'll come collectively, and that's why it's called collective bargain. They'll come together and say, look, we're going we're gonna to negotiate on behalf of a group of people. So you'll have to deal with labor unions. Um, for sure, a very important part of HR processes is, is overseeing training and development. Um, you know, uh, industry conferences, uh, prepare managers to lead, um, any kind of human capital investment in people 
is absolutely critical. Because remember, remember the with the goals, right? The goals is to not only facilitate performance but improve productivity. If that's the case, then you need to give people the tools, and part of the tools are training. So um, even though you'll uh, be in a business, you should be asking for things like, well, how is how are we going to make sure our people um, continually improve? And one of the things you'll do is educational activities and development activities to facilitate that. So overseeing training and development is a big part of uh, HR. Um, However, part of that is you have to get a return on your investment, so it needs to be cost-effective, right? So in terms of what you're trying to achieve, you're going to look at uh, putting someone in a training uh, opportunity, but remember, that's going to cost you. It's going to take them out of whatever the job they're doing for a period of time, and plus it's going to usually involve travel and uh, unless it's online. But either way, there's an expense associated with it. So you want to make sure it's managed well, and HR should be doing that to see if they get a good return on the investment, okay? Um Actually, there's a pretty good little circle that get created here then from the right out of the book. Again, you could go through this stuff, um, and it's and there's is a lot of detail. I, I forgot what page. I think it's uh, four. Oof, gosh, it's four twenty, something like that. Anyway, so um, a couple of great things. First off, on the job training, and this is things that I keep telling you guys about in terms of hey, you know, there's no substitute for experience. So some of the things like getting an internship. Uh, you know, in it, it, you know, whether now in high school or in college is key because you're going to learn on the job, and certainly you'll be under the direction of some experienced employee or manager who's going to you know mentor you and guide you, which is another way to 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 develop people. Um, now there's web-based instruction, classroom teacher things you already know about. Uh, they call something called vestibule training. That's where they can sort of take you away and put you in a situation that simulates work. Which is kind of cool. I never went through that, but that that uh, certainly for certain roles, that's going to be key. Um, and and job rotation. It's one of the things I did. Not only was promoted, I rotated through a couple different positions to understand more of the functions that I needed to understand. And then I did a lot of this, and that's conferences and seminars. And one of the keys again to this is return on investment. So if you do have, uh, so if you send people on conferences. Uh, and or send them to seminars, make sure they just don't go there and have fun and come back and put their information on the shelf and then never look at it again. So make sure there's a debrief associated with that to make sure it's cost effective. Okay, So you know, training, training and development really key. Uh, what about resolving day-to-day -day problems? Now this is a big one because you have the upside of managing people which is fun and getting motivated, but there's also a challenge. Okay, There may be employee complaints. There may be customer complaints about employees. So there's formal procedures here Okay, for handling employment complaints, and you have to be able to be the one that creates those. Writing and distributing them to each employee, making sure they're educated. Part of the training is internal processes. Remember, we talked about that in previous mods, and you need to make sure that, uh, that the, the um, employees know how to go about conflict resolution. I, I personally believe I got taught Matthew 18 principles, and I didn't even understand that through, my, uh, through the company I started with. Uh, and that is try to work it out with each other first before you escalate it to supervisors or managers. Okay, uh, But a big part of day-to-day -day problems and issues are legal. Uh, one of the things you have to consider is something called the, uh, uh, well, this is an example, but take a step back. There's something called the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC. It's huge. It's really important. It's been around for 50 years. In fact, it, so it started in 1965, and, and this is, this is an agency, you know, you talk about uh, the, the, the rights and, and, and getting rights in the 60s, and this was a big deal. So it's a federal agency, um, really important, and they have certain acts. So this is just one of them. So your book picks out one, not sure why they did the Pregnancy Discrimination Act, but it's important. You know, you should know that uh, federal law does have some requirements, and in this case, very specific case, uh, and how to deal with, with employees, of, of, of young ladies or, or older ladies that get pregnant. And so it's important that if you... Uh, or running a business or a part of HR, you need to understand the legal ramifications of the things you do. It's uh, it's really just that important. However, there's going to be a situation where you may end up uh, with what I call a, a square peg in a round hole. No matter how management has done their job, uh, you know the the company's heading in one direction, and um, and the employee you're working with is not. So sometimes it just doesn't work out. They perform below expectations in a continuous matter. In these instances, hey, you have to result maybe to professional counseling, assistance, some disciplinary action, and then ultimately termination. So if you're an employee and, and you're receiving this, you, there's huge red flags going on. 
You're not yet fired, but you're well on your way to being fired. And again, I will say this, and I can't emphasize enough, do ever get fired. So if that's the case, you may want to consider moving on. Okay, so, so that's 18.1. You know, the objective was to identify the components of resource management. You know, you're looking at recruiting and screening employees, managing and dealing with uh, whether it's unions or overseeing employee training or development. You're overseeing pay and benefits. Uh, you're resolving day-to-day -day problems, ensuring equal opportunity, of course, and, the, and making sure the laws of, of, the, of the country are, and, and city and state are met. And finally, you're handling employee terminations. So really important introduction to the next uh, mod, 18.2, on motivating po people, but HR function, absolutely critical in your organization. Thanks, and we'll see you real soon.